Good morning, everybody. Welcome to another edition of the Lab 207 webcast. My name is Mr. Kite, and I'll be hanging out with you today as we continue on in our series about Earth systems. Topic for the day is going to be soil, so like always, let me get you some objectives, and we'll get going. Today, there is just one thing that I need you to know or be able to do, and that is to discuss the function, formation, and characteristics of soil. Now, I know that's a simple objective. This might take a little while to walk through those, so go ahead and get comfortable, grab something to take some notes on, and here we go. So at a base level, let's just talk about what soil is. Um, at its simplest definition, soil is simply a connection between the biological world and the geological world. It's this nice little membrane that surrounds most of the earth, and it connects the living world to the geological world. Um, soil, as we will find out through the rest of the video, is a combination of organic material and inorganic material. So it's made of minerals, and it's made of organic material from decaying organisms. So soil is very much an integration point between the living world and the non-living world. And let's go ahead and start talking about some details with soil. Now, soil does many things for us on a day-to-day -day basis. Some major functions that you should know about. It provides habitat for organisms. So obviously you get things like birds, and not birds, um, beetles and worms, uh, you got mice, you got moles, you got rabbits, you got burrowing animals, you got bacteria, you got fungi. There's a lot of stuff that lives in soil, so it's a habitat. Obviously, and this is the one you probably always think of when you think of soil, it provides a place for plant growth. Um, but one of the major functions of soil is that it provides water filtration. As water soaks down through the soil into aquifers, a lot of the chemicals that are uh, maybe carried in that water get filtered out by the soil. It's also responsible for nutrient cycling, which means that certain nutrients like phosphorus and nitrogen, as they are cycled through the living world, they always go through the soil in that process. So there are many things that soil does for us. And while we're talking about soil, let's go ahead and talk about the formation of soil. So as I mentioned already, soil is made of two components. It is made of organic material, <clears throat> and it is made of inorganic material. Now the organic material, that is going to be anything that lives, dies, and decomposes on the surface of the soil. So this could be grasses that have popped up and died, it could be bugs, it could be decaying birds, it could be old trees. Any organic material that dies and becomes a part of the soil is half the component. The other half is going to be the inorganic part and that is going to come from parent material. Now parent material is the rock that underlays an area of soil and as that rock breaks down into sediment it lends that sediment to the soil and so that becomes the other part of the soil. Now over time soil matures. Immature soil is mostly sediment and very little organic material. So immature soil is tough to grow stuff in because you need organic material to provide drainage and at the same time water retention and nutrients and things like that. So immature soil isn't so good for growing things on. And then as you go through time, some organisms will move into this area, they will live their lives, they will pass away, and they will become part of the organic component of the soil. So a young soil has still quite a lot of sediment, but it also now has more organic material, which means that more plants and animals can live in this area and then over time as that community lives and dies and becomes part of the soil you get to a mature soil and a mature soil has a good balance of organic material and inorganic material and mature soils are going to be the best soils for growing things in because they have the balance of nutrients and minerals and organic material that plants are going to need in order to thrive. There are some major characteristics of soil that you need to be aware of, and I'm just going to kind of walk you through them. These are all things that determine the characteristics of a particular soil in an area. So the first one is the parent material. That is going to be the rock that broke down to provide the sediment. A couple examples. If you had like a silica rock, like quartz, that broke down, that's going to produce a sandy soil. Sandy soils are usually low in organic material, but they drain very well. So that would be an example. Or if you are in an area where the parent material is calcium carbonate, that breaks down and provides a very fertile soil. So depending on the rock that breaks down, that can increase or decrease the uh, fertility of your soil. You got the climate. Now, if you are in an area that is cold and the ground is frozen a lot of the year, things aren't going to break down, they're not going to decompose, and organisms aren't going to be able to burrow into the soil, so the soil is probably going to be fairly poor. If you are in a hot, wet, tropical area, 
things are going to break down and decompose so quickly that plants may just take them up before they actually become part of the soil. So climate is going to determine characteristics. Also topography. Topography is the shape of the land. Um, soil on sloped lands, like a hill or something, probably isn't going to be as deep because it's regularly going to be washing and eroding down into the valley. But in the valley where all that soil erodes down to and collects, you could have really deep, nice, fertile soils. Um, you've got the organisms that live in the soil. We're going to talk about them in a second. And then time, like I just talked about. The longer soil has been around, generally the more fertile it's going to be. However, over time, if you've had a lot of crops or whatever grown on that soil, then most of the nutrients could have been taken out of the soil. So all of these things, these five characteristics, are going to help determine the characteristics of your soil. Now, Ooh, bad picture. My fault. Anyway, one thing that I'm going to guess AP might want to test you on is the soil horizons. This is basically the layers of the soil. You can think of soil as being like a cake. And I'm going to go ahead and just walk you through the layers of the soil and a little bit about each one. So first thing I want you to remember, here's the order. O-A-E-B-C. Organic arthropods eat blind chickens. Help Use that to help you kind of keep track of it. Now, let's walk through each one. O is for organic. This is going to be the very top layer of the soil where your living and recently dead organisms live. Um, not talking about any inorganic material here, this is just the very top living or once living layer of the soil. Then from the O horizon you get down into the A horizon. A horizon is known as the topsoil. The topsoil is where the organic material has been mixed with some of the sediment, and this is the place where you grow stuff, okay? This is where, if we're going to talk about fertility, we're going to talk about basically how much topsoil is present. If you had a lot of topsoil, that means you've had a lot of organic material die and get mixed in with sediment. Um, if you've got less topsoil, then it's not going to be an area that's good for growing because you lack either the sediment or the uh, organic material that's needed to help the soil to be successful. Next thing you have got is the zone E. Now, E zone can occur between O and A, or it can occur between A and B, but it is always going to be above layer B. Uh, horizon E is known as the layer of elevation and I probably spelled that wrong, but elevation is basically uh, also known as the zone of leaching where minerals and nutrients that are in the soil get washed out. So as water percolates down through the soil, it takes the minerals and the nutrients out of zone E and it deposits them into zone B. Zone B is known as subsoil and this area contains most of the nutrients, and when I say nutrients, I mean minerals like potassium and nitrogen. Um, it does not contain very much or any organic material. And then the last one is zone C, horizon Z, that is, not Z, C, that is your parent material, whatever the rock that is being weathered is, is going to be contained. So those are your soil horizons. I would make sure that you, if you did not catch all of that, go back and make sure that you watch that again so that you've got them down. Now, another thing that you might need to know how to do is to determine soil texture. Now, there are three types of particle. Each particle is determined by its size, and the collection of particles basically determines the porosity. Porosity is how much open space there is in the soil and how easily water can flow through it. So the smallest type of mineral particle that you can have is sand, or sorry, sand is the largest type of mineral particle you can have. Um, soil that is really sandy is very porous, it's got a lot of open space in it, so water flows through it very easily. Uh, your middle sized particle is silt, and then the smallest particle is clay. Clay soils do not allow water to flow through them very easily at all. Um, soil, or soil that is mostly clay or pure clay almost acts like a dam where water just runs into it and there's no space for the water to go through so it just kind of gets stuck. Now when scientists are classifying soils they use this chart here and this chart basically talks about the percentage of clay, silt, and sand in a given sample of soil. Based on the balance of those percentages soil scientists can uh, classify the soil. So the way this works is you use these little lines and you follow the lines to the value that they have given you. So let's say that you are told that a particular soil sample is 20% clay. Let's, let's say that it is 
50% silt and let's say that it is 30% sand. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to just pick one of these. So let's go with clay. All right, so clay, we're going to find 20%. Boom, here's 20% for the clay. And then we have got silt for 50%. So here is 50% for the silt. And then sand, you have got 30%. Then from here, you're just going to kind of draw, follow the line. So I'm going to follow this line out this way. And I'm going to follow this line down that way. And then the 20% line, follow that one straight across. So <laughs> my made-up soil is going to be right here. It's somewhere between loam and silt loam. So you need to know how to operate in this little chart right here in order to classify uh, Soils, you also need to know that the soil texture determines porosity. Sand is highly porous, water flows through it very easily. Clay, not porous at all, water doesn't flow through it. A couple things to wrap up on today. So you need to know about the chemical properties of soil. Um, and there are two terms that you need to know, cation exchange capacity and base saturation. So when we talk about chemical properties in a lot of situations, we are talking about the amount of clay. Now, the interesting thing about clay is that clay is negatively charged, so it attracts positive ions. Those are known as cations. Um, things that have got a positive charge that plants care about would be things like sodium and potassium. Um, the ability of soil to hold on to those ions um, is good because those ions are nutrients that plants use. So if soil has got a high cation exchange capacity, that means that it holds on to a lot of those ions that plants are going to use as their nutrient sources. Um, base saturation is going to be properties in the soil that lower the acidity of soil. Now, generally plants like a fairly acidic soil, um, so base saturation is going to balance the acidity. So those are the two chemical properties that you need to know. I don't know if you'll need to know them in depth, but you need to at least be familiar with them. And then the last biological property of soil you need to know about is the stuff living in the soil. That's going to be the biological properties. Generally, good, healthy soils have more living things in them. And some of the things that you need to be aware of, 90% um, of the living things in soil are either fungi, bacteria, or protozoans. But you have also got your mixers, which are going to be things like mouses, mice, moles, rabbits, anything that burrows through the soil, because as they burrow through the soil, they're going to mix it up. And then you got your detritivores, which are going to be things that break down stuff that is living on the surface of the uh, soil. So this could be like snails, it could be slugs, it could be beetles that decompose stuff. But all of these things go together to kind of mix and aerate and decompose stuff down into the soil. And this is your last slide for the day. Talked about soil. Now we need to talk about how we wreck soil. Um, two major things when it comes to soil that you need to know about. The general term degradation means the loss of fertility or productivity of soil. Soil that has been degraded is no longer useful. Um, a lot of degradation comes as a result of erosion. Now erosion, like we talked about in a previous video, is the transport away of sediments and it usually happens through wind or water. Um, soils that have had most of their vegetation removed are highly susceptible to erosion because plant roots hold soil in place. If there are no plants, any water or wind that comes through can blow that topsoil away. So topsoil in an area can be blown away in a shorter time as one growing season, but it could take hundreds of thousands of years to reform that soil. So soil forms very slowly, but it can be carried away very quickly. You can also have problems with compaction, where this is you've had a lot of machinery moving across the soil or a lot of people walking on it, and all the soil gets packed together. And as it gets packed together, it loses its porosity, which means water cannot flow through it anymore. And that's it. That is your crash course into soil. Um, if you need to, go back, review some things, make sure that you got this down pat. Thanks for joining us on the Lab 207 webcast. My name is Mr. Kite, and we'll see you again.